grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, to the observance of a Holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word. Together we say, Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Let us pray for God's grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 51 have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the blow bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings, then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah? 
It's quite famous. It's been covered by a lot of people and even made it into a Shrek movie. I'll put a link in the comments below so that you can listen to it if you want to. You'll be relieved that I'm not going to try and sing it, but the lyrics go like this. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What you may not know is that Psalm 51, which I just read, is the response of this baffled David, King David, the same one of whose lineage a saviour was born. This was a broken king, baffled and broken, tempted by his own power, drawn to Bathsheba, bathing on the roof another man's wife, caught in the lies of his adultery and ultimately scheming to have her husband killed in battle. It's not an uplifting story. A baffled and broken king, marked by pride, grasping of power, coveting of what he could not have. And in this psalm, a king longing for a hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me, he says. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Marked by sin, longing for salvation. Any other Ash Wednesday, we would have the opportunity to line up and receive a smudge of ash on our foreheads. Covid, of course, has made that impossible. So this year we won't be marked in self-recognition of our sinfulness. But the invisible marks of sin will be there just the same. We are all a marked people, just like David. And of course, for those of you who are au fait with the intricacies of Anglican worship, you will know that the one thing we don't say or sing during Lent is that word, Alleluia. Both David and you and I, we're all marked by sin and longing for our lips to raise an Alleluia. So today we gather online, ready to admit that perhaps we are a bit baffled and a little broken. And in recognition that we are marked by sin and longing. And as we go on to admit all this through confession and prayer, we remember that the mark in ash we would usually, usually receive as part of that confession is not just any old smudge. It's not just a dirty mark on the outside to make visible what we know can be true on the inside too. No, that dirty smudge is a cross the symbol of our salvation, the symbol of our sin having been wiped away. Not something removed with a damp flannel in our bath at the end of the day, but something removed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our sin taken away by God giving himself up in our place. 
we might remain baffled and broken and certainly remain marked. And I hope you too feel the sense of longing for Easter to come, for God's kingdom to come. The theologian Walter Brueggemann wrote a poem called Marked with Ashes. Part of it goes like this. This Wednesday is a long way from Ash Wednesday, but all our Wednesdays are marked with ashes. We begin this day with that taste of ash in our mouth, of failed hope and broken promises, of forgotten children and frightened women. We ourselves are ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We can taste our mortality as we roll the ash around on our tongues. We are able to ponder our ashness with some confidence because our every Wednesday of ashes anticipates your Easter victory over that dry, flaky taste of death. On this Wednesday, we submit our ashen way to you, you Easter parade of newness. Before the sun sets, take our Wednesday and Easter us. Easter us to joy and energy and courage and freedom. Easter us that we may be fearless for your truth. Come here and Easter our Wednesday with mercy and justice and peace and generosity. We pray as we wait for the risen one who comes soon. And so perhaps as we enter these 40 days of Lent, all of us marked and longing in this time of repentance. We can't help but whisper a little hallelujah. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than of ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. 
our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbours and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection.
together we pray. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Usually at this point in the service would be when I would invite you up to receive ashes. Of course, that can't happen. But I'm going to pray the prayers and I'm going to say the words in any case, in a hope that they will help us to begin our Lent on the right foot. Let's pray. God, our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth Grant that in the absence of ashes, we will receive a sense of penitence which is appropriate and symbolic at this time. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. God our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
so may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.